This unit uses as an example the HB300 SX humidifier, but any humidifier unit that has a wicking element can use this idea, which is a simple modification that allows the wicking unit to last longer. Now obviously one of the big things that affects the life of the wicking unit is calcification, especially if you have city water. Now even if you have soft water, but you're not trying to just throw your money away by running the softener flat out all the time, you still probably have like 3 grains of hardness, which is around 50 parts per million. It's still a big problem for humidifier wicks. Now anybody who knows anything looks at this, and this is just a mess. Well, there's a difference. There's two different kinds of messes that I wish to discuss with you. The first kind of mess is called evaporite, which is the thing that normally deposits on your wick, which causes you to have to change it out often. It costs you money. The second kind is an electrically deposited form of calcium, and it's called argonite, and it has little crystal whiskers. And these whiskers all form together to, in the same way, clog up the same wick. But in the second case, the whiskers allow air to pass through. So the obvious question at this point is, what are you going to show me so that I could get argonite deposits on my wick and make it last longer? Well, that has to do with this little light right here and some wiring. It's very simple. And this modification makes use of a simple 12-volt wall wart that probably many of us have thrown away because it was part of a lot of electrical equipment that broke. Now, this is a view inside this particular unit, and what you have here is the wick from the fan side and also there's a small plate with a wire attached to it just ignore that gold thing and this is something I'm going to show you how to make and also on top what you see is there's a, a metal rod coming out of the top which I've added and it has a small clip attached now this is the inside the fan unit of the wick and obviously there's no calcium deposits here because the calcium deposits mainly show up in the back side where the water evaporation is the highest now circling back just a bit so I can help you draw some conclusions here before we go on, I'm passing a light through this because I want to show you the argonite crystals are finger-like and they allow air through, whereas if this was a, an evaporite calcium deposit, it would just be one solid block. Now sure, the air passages are restricted, but in this case all you have to do is to go up one fan stop, for instance on this unit, go from an F1 to an F2, and you get the same humidification, and you haven't had to change out the element. And what I've also added to this invention is a small light, which the brightness tells you whether or not the unit needs to be replaced or not. Now what I'm showing you is a close-up view of the top part of the wick farthest away from the water, and these passages are open, which indicates that the water evaporated before it got to the top in that mess of electrically deposited argonite calcium, which normally you would think is a problem, but it's completely porous. And this indicates that the wick is really still working well because the water evaporated before it even got to the top of the wick. Normally, if this was evaporite deposited calcium, this whole top section would be solid. In fact, you know, once it gets full at the top, it starts going down, and it's about a quarter inch deep, and it goes all the way down, and it just eventually clogs up the unit, so you have to change it out. In this regard, you still have the top edge is still open. And in addition, you still have a contributive part of the center of this wick, which is actually allowing airflow through. Now, one thing that anybody who has a humidifier knows is as the wick starts to clog up, you have to crank the fan speed up. In this case, you don't have to. Now, the clip lead I showed earlier is attached to this flat metal wire, which is pushed through and along the top of the entire wick. And when you attach the clip lead to this, this applies a voltage, which puts a current through the entire wick and this current is what causes the deposit of those whisker-like fine calcium argonite crystals which is what allows air to continue to flow freely through the wick. Just as an amazing aside, this little strip of metal here is made out of stainless steel and it's commonly available and used in windshield wipers. It's the little thin blade that runs on either side of the rubber piece that extends all the way across. This acts, this acts like a spring and it allows downward force to be applied from the rubber to the windshield and it keeps everything straight and aligned. This normally is made out of what they call 316 stainless steel and is very hard to get a hold of if you're just an everyday person. Um, it's hard to get a small little strip of stainless steel like this. And the thing about stainless steels in general, and particularly this 316 variety, is it's capable of making very, very tight bends without breaking. Now, as indicated earlier, when we attach the clip lead to this, the voltage from that little wall wart transformer I showed earlier is run all the way across the top of the wick and causes the current to flow down through the wick to that little plate that you saw originally on the bottom of the humidifier. Now, what is going on in here is a little bit complicated, but if you want to skip ahead, that's fine. What you have when you have calcium dissolved in water is it's combined ionically with two hydroxyl groups, two OH groups, which each donate an electron to um, 
calcium, which make it happy. It's calcium plus two charge, and it's suspended in the water. So if you want the calcium to come out of suspension, you're going to have to give it what it craves, which is the two electrons. And that's what the, the current, basically, it passes through the wick is for. It gives it two electrons, which precipitates it out as the arcanite crystals, and coincidentally, the two electrons also give the, the uh, OH groups what it needs to form water again. This is the SX 1045 wick for their uh, HB 300 humidifiers and it fits several other models. Take this thing out of the box and it's hopefully ta -da, a perfect replacement for the one that was in there. Okay, so this one looks a lot better obviously. There's no calcification. <laughs> So one of the things that I wanted to show in this video is how to keep this uh, so that you can keep a lot of airflow through this. But that's what gets you your humidity transfer, obviously, from the liquid that's pulled up into this wick is the airflow through it, and that's what the fan does for you. So unless you really, you know, enjoy running your fan on F4, uh, very loud, very hard to hear over, uh, you know, you can still get by and pull air through this thing and humidify. But you want to try to run this thing on the lowest setting or F2. Uh, to basically keep the noise down. You can do that with the modification that I'm getting ready to show you and that basically the modification once again is uh, to actually put an electrode in the top of this unit. An electrode we're going to get is from your standard air, I mean your standard um, windshield wiper. And when you take them off your car you throw them away. And what we're looking for is this shiny piece right here in the middle. So I'll show you how to take that out. Now the way you get this small piece of metal out is your windshield wiper has two ends and the one end uh, is of no consequence because it slides in and out freely on this little gripper right here, this little hook. The other end however most often has this kind of a latching mechanism in it and if you have a screwdriver like this you can get in there and you can see that latching mechanism actually gets down and goes into a hole in the rubber. So take this and get the screwdriver underneath the latching mechanism and simply just pry it out. Okay. So you got that. So this thing is free to move now. And now you've got these two little pieces sticking out like this. And believe it or not, um, it's easy. It's just basically pulling this out. And now what you're left with are these two pieces of metal. And they're very useful. Um, they're very flexible. Um, they don't rust. Obviously, you can use them in, in a number of a number of ways to use like small spines that you can you can bend. Uh, look at the, see the bend I can put on that. It's a very very good bend, and then it'll go back. It'll be perfectly straight. You can use these as a ruler, <laughs> almost. You can lay them flat. This is actually good enough that you can use as a ruler uh, for small places where you have to get in and draw a line or something like that. This this has a handyman or something like that. You know, these little strips laying around, or even a gardener. All kinds of things around the house you can use these for. Um, in this case, we're going to use them as an electrode for um, uh, invention, basically to try to keep uh, calcium from building up inside your humidifier wick. So here we have our humidifier wick, and we have our <coughs> piece of ribbing from our windshield wiper. Very handy, useful piece of material. On this larger picture, you can see that I can bend this thing. Pretty good arc. There's very few pieces of metal we can bend like that. And it really bends. I mean, you can get into a very tight bend and come back, and it'll still be straight. I mean, you can still use it as a ruler, basically. This this very rare, very handy piece of material to have around. In this case, we're going to use it as a um, electrode for this little invention. And what we need to do, and here's the other piece. There were two of them in the windshield wiper assembly. And what you do with this, let me zoom it in a little bit, is you just push this in. what this is doing, it's running along the top, and when it gets to the end, you'll hear it right there. And it's, it's driven all the way down to this end. So basically this piece of metal has continuity with this wiper, I mean this uh, wicking material, all the way down. So, and it doesn't cause any damage to the, to the, to the, um, the wick. It's hot glued into the top in several areas. And this basically, if you put it in, in the area right here, there's a slot in this location right here. So go ahead and stick it in the right there. Run it in for this particular brand. You could use a similar technique for other humidifier wicks. It doesn't necessarily have to be a 
an, an air, I mean, a SX unit or this filter. Uh, and then once you got this like this, uh, one thing you might want to do is to break this. And there's a number of ways you can do this. Uh, you can score it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score it only. And I'm going to cut all the way through because it's very tough material. I'm going to score it with a pair of diagonal cutters. Okay. I'm just going to score the material. <clears throat> Basically, just puts a scratch in it. It doesn't really do a lot, a lot at all if you can see it. Can't really. It's right there. So what I'm going to do is basically now put two pairs of pliers on it really close to where I did the scoring and then basically bend it. And that scoring was enough to allow for it to break. So now what you do is take this piece of electrode right here and just bend it over. And then let's see, go ahead and use this other one. You may have to pull it out a little bit. Pull it back out. And go ahead and make sure you can get a tight enough bond on this. So here we go. Now you can kind of see what I was saying about this material. If you look at that, they call it bend radius on this, very tight. For a material that is that stiff, that can hold its shape and the bend that I was showing you earlier, very valuable piece of material and it doesn't break. So this is the electrode for the top of our unit and what we're going to do is attach a wire to this that has a small current running through it. So the three components that make this possible are the um, power supply, the electrode plate, and sometimes this is the cathode, sometimes it's the anode, it doesn't matter how you connect the polarity for this thing. If you were doing a plating operation, sure. But you're just adding two, um, two electrons to a hydroxyl to free the calcium up. So it really doesn't matter the polarity of the, of the power supply. So this is about, this is 12 volts, 300 amps, 300 milliamps, 300 amps, yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter the polarity, that's enough current. You're not running very much. You're down in the probably 50 microamp range. So you're not taxing this thing at all. And the LED is something you can buy. There's a place called Electronic Gold Mine that I buy a lot of components from. All Electronics is another place. Uh, there's several places that you'll sell these for like um, $5 for 100. These are very bright. If you connected one, they're about 3 volts if you run them properly, which is like a, a lithium coin cell battery. Sometimes you see these things hooked up directly due to those. Um, it's not the best way to run them. But even at that, it's around three volts to run these at full current, which you know is probably around maybe two, three milliamps. At that current level, these things will blind you. Okay, which is the idea and the principle which facilitates what I'm doing here. If you run a millionth of the amount of current that takes the blind crap out of you, you actually can see it. You get down to five millionths of an amp. This thing's actually eliminated. It actually tells you what's going on in this circuit. And that's why I put it in here, so you could actually tell, first of all, if the thing's connected and running. Second of all, when it starts to get calcium in it to the point where you don't get airflow through it. First hook it up, this is relatively bright. When it starts to get to the point where you really need to change the thing out, it starts getting dim. So that's what the function of this is. And then we have a test lead here, a little, well not a test lead, but a clip. These are commonly available in any uh, electronics outlet on the internet. Like I said, all electronics and uh, electronics goal to find has this kind of a clip. This is the clip onto here. So basically this part, this electro, this uh, plate, which just completes the circuit. This could be the cathode, which is the, a negative, or this could be anode, which is positive. And uh, it basically sits in the bottom, and I've got the other, the other wire of the wall ward soldered right here. So obviously you need to be able to solder. You need to have a plate like this, which is available at a hardware store like Home Depot. You've got your transformer which uh, usually people throw their phones out. This is the first thing to go, obviously, and there's one of these on there. It's usually like nine volts, plenty. Voltage and current of the transformer are not an issue because you're actually dealing with a millionth of something or five millionths of something. That you could actually screw this up and be a hundred, hundred factor off and still this thing would work fine. So, you know, that's not really an issue with, you know, how this thing works. 
the, the miracle is, is that at five parts per million, <laughs> you know, of what it's supposed to be doing, five parts out of its full current, you know, if it's one million or two million ohms, you know, of, of a millionth of that or five millionths of that, you can actually see the LED running. So that's your indication that's easy to hook up, gives you an indication what's going on with this unit. So um, between these three par parts here, we're going to go ahead and set this up. And like I said, when we get it in the unit, all I have to do is put this uh, plate, could be the anode or the cathode, put it in the bottom, uh, run these uh, wires through the back, and then our final operation will be to clip this on here, okay, and then plug this into the wall. And then when we do that, the LED will come on. At first it won't be on because the wicking will be dry, okay? So as we pour water in this, the wicking will get, uh, draw water up and you'll see this uh, LED come on, which is really cool. It tells you, like I said, uh, what's going on with the unit. It'll be fairly bright, maybe around 50 micrograms, and that current will tell you that the wicking media is really clear of, um, of calcium. Basically, it's not built all the way shut. So, and it tells you there's plenty of air passages available. Once it gets really dim, that means you gotta change it. And what I've said is relative. Really bright means it's okay, really dim means it's changeable. I mean, when you look at it, you'll get a good feel for what's going on. And plus, you know, when it gets time to change it, you'll be able to sit there and run the fan switch up and down, hold your hand over, you know, the outlet of air at the top, and you can tell, you know, yeah, uh, the light's dimmer, yeah, I'm holding my hand over it. When I change the fan, I don't get, it don't get a lot of change in the airflow. So, you know, primarily take this and go along with your own intuition for running the fan switch, and you can get a good idea when to change it. So here we are, ready to install the three components that we've put together. Here's the anode or cathode plate, however you've randomly managed to solder it to your LED, and like I said, it doesn't matter for reasons I've already stated. And then over here, go ahead and run your jumper lead clip in with the LED still outside the unit. So the LED is outside, so you just put it in the vent hole. Do like that, just drape it in. If you notice, you can see, you can see that you can see the light come on when I dipped it in the water. You can see it or not. So anyway, you do have some current here when you actually, um, you can see it when you dip the, dip the electrode in the water, so you get some current there, which is a good sign you've got it hooked up. Now I go ahead and put the uh, filter in, and these have a little lip and catch on the back side, so you put it in, drop it down, and it catches, just like that, so there we go. And over here in this end, this is where the clip lead is. And also the, elect the electrode coming out of the top, you just take your um, clip lead, pull it up. Try to fasten it as far back as you can here because you're going to be putting the storage tank in and out, the water storage tank. So it does help if you pull it back so you've got some room for the tank to slide in and out of here. So this is basically it. This is all you had to do to put it in. So this is a time-lapse video that shows that after you put the water in, the water starts conducting electricity in the wick and the LED slowly comes on and gets brighter till it's maximum value to show you that everything's working. So you've got your unit plugged in, you've got your DC power source for your electrodes plugged in, and the unit's on, and you look back and you've got your little LED telling you that your electrodes are active and depositing calcium come evenly across the wick so that the unit will last longer and you only have to change it if you got fairly soft water about every three and a half months. So there you go. Hopefully this was helpful.